Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone with Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And today's video was supposed to be a quick take on Fujifilm's new $2,300 optically image stabilized medium format coverage GF 45 to 100 F4. And I promise it will be. The thing of it is, this turned out to be so much more. But before I get into it, a brief update on our Streets of New York street photography workshop. I'm delighted and yeah, fantastic to share with you the news that our October session is already sold out and March and June are filling fast. So please visit www.3bmep.com slash streets2 to learn more. Though, come to think of it, you might also want to watch the first couple of minutes of our recent Leica M10 monochrome video where I go into it in a little bit more detail. In any case, I want to say again, Claudia and I are so looking forward to meeting you in New York City. Okay, back to the GF45100, a pre-production unit, I should add, lent to me by Fujifilm USA, so thank you guys. I'll just cut to the chase, and then I'll show you what I mean. First, holy crap, beautiful organic imagery, wonderful tonality and dynamic range, gobsmacking resolution, of course, and pop, beautifully corrected. Hold that thought. When paired with the GFX100, you could argue, in fact, that this is the last lens camera combination you will ever want or need. And for some of us, I'd agree. Though there is just no way around it. This is a big, heavy combo to carry around all day and out of reach for most of us. A couple of hours on the Coney Island boardwalk with a pre-production unit, no sweat. The 45 to 104 offers a full frame equivalent field of view of call it 35 to 80 millimeter, a constant maximum aperture depth of field equal to that of a full frame f3.2, I'll call it 2.8 if you don't mind, and image quality which stands up to the GFX 100's ability to punch in effortlessly to twice or even three times that at the long end because of the 102 megapixel sensor on board. Put differently, taken together, you've got an incredibly flexible system in your hand capable of appallingly high image quality. The lens is well-built and weather-sealed. It has a real aperture ring all the way down to f32. Yay! And built-in lens image stabilization purporting to offer five stops advantage for shooting handheld at precariously, impossibly slow shutter speeds for a medium format camera though I don't yet understand how or if the lens IS works in combination with the IBIS on the GFX. But most importantly, in my short time with the pre-production unit, I want to repeat that image quality is just outstanding, as in fact I've come to expect from the entire GF line. The 45 to 100 is crisp without being artificial. Offers nice star points and small apertures if you're into that kind of thing. Though I did notice color artifacts at the smallest aperture with the brightest sun. Hold that thought, actually, now that I think about it, for a production copy of the lens. But what really grabbed my attention, as has been the case with every other Fujifilm GF lens I've used thus far, is that chromatic aberration, not just lateral chromatic aberration, you know, the green or purple fringing, but spherochromatic or longitudinal chromatic aberration with just out of focus objects was basically non-existent. This is actually a big deal to me, especially in this era where it is often the case that lenses from other highly regarded companies, even those much more expensive than this puppy, seem to have been designed as if people either won't notice or will be sufficiently mollified by incomplete software correction. This is especially annoying if you shoot video, which in fact is a big selling point of the GFX100. Okay, rant over. Though, speaking of video, you know what else is a big deal? In a quick test with autofocus turned off, I saw no focus breathing, nor in an equally brief test did the lens lose focus as I zoomed. This, in spite of the fact that upon cursory inspection of the press release and then Reading it again, I found no assertion that the lens was par focal, nor that they'd designed it to minimize focus breathing. I must have just flown over it too quickly. Second, then again, a true hard stop 
manual focus clutch would make my day, as would an engraved depth of field scale to go with it. Oh well. Third, if you wanted to go beyond this one lens, you could add their excellent 23mm f4 to the kit for wider, more dynamic shots, and or their superb, just stunning 110mm f2 for portraits. I've shot with both, and in particular, the 110 mated to the GFX100 offers resolution that borders on endless. I'll put a link to our previous videos on the GFX system down below in the show notes, or up above here if I remember to do that. I usually don't, so that you can see for yourself. Personally, I wouldn't bother with anything else except maybe their 63 2.8 for a more compact, slightly shallower depth of field street setup, though I've not gone hands-on with one. If I had to go longer, I'd look to full-frame APS-C or even Micro Four Thirds options instead. Fourth, the GFX 100's phase detect autofocus and in-body image stabilization is a combination unmatched, in my experience, by any other medium format camera and offers what I believe to be the most persuasive method for, call it extracting maximum performance from a medium format sensor unleashed from a tripod or other support. Add dual card slots, built-in dual battery tray that lasted all day, though it was exhausted at the end, a multi-axis articulated rear panel, although not flippy, but come on, guys, a gorgeous 5.7 million dot UXGA EVF with an optional tiltable rotatable adapter, which I really like. And, well, other than the promised but not yet delivered pixel shifting, fiddly secondary controls, a built-in vertical grip that only a mother could love, the infuriating absence of a dedicated ISO dial, and, okay, as I mentioned just a moment ago, weight and size and price $10,000 body only. It's incontrovertible that though expensive to most of us, the GFX100 is in fact a highly priced competitive alternative system for those of us demanding pinnacle performance, unbowed by price. Or weight, or size, or fiddly secondary controls. I think I've made my point. Now, in a moment, I'm going to show you a few examples of how the GF45-100 performed on the GFX100. Last week, when Claudia and I went down to the Coney Island boardwalk, to give it a go. But I want to provide some context by returning to that Robert Browning quote, something Laz Baptiste and I touched upon during our discussion of his incredible sublime Manhattan panoramic. I'll put a link to that video as well. From where I sit, it is a must see. The point I want to make is that Claudia and I almost always find ourselves in the position, at least for our YouTube work, of our reach exceeding our grasp, our ambition inevitably aimed beyond our capability at that particular moment. But it's how we grow. It's how we stay excited. In this instance, as we wandered the boardwalk, another favorite quote of mine from J.R.R. R. Tolkien, not all who wander are lost, we were looking not only at the GF45-100 to see how it performed mostly as a photographic lens, but Claudia was shooting behind-the-scenes footage where our aim was to really push the limits of the Micro Four Thirds Panasonic G9's IBIS. It's internally recorded 4K at 60 frames per second. It's updated autofocus. Push the limits of the Panasonic like a DG Vario Sumilux 10 to 25 1.7. We made it to it. Push Freewell's magnetic quick swap neutral density filter system. Push the limits of Zhiyun's Weeble Lab as gimbal, and push Claudia's limits filming dynamic motion with and without a gimbal at all. Hold those thoughts for future videos. All of which is a long way of saying that over the next three minutes, you're going to see a lot more of me behind the scenes than usual, so apologies for that, actually. You'll see some of our testing and where those limits are. And with all of this said, you just might see how profoundly calming it was for me to return to my hometown and the boardwalk of my youth. Anyway, here you go. Three minutes of Coney Island with the GFX100 and a pre-production GF45-100F4.
enjoy.